voice of Vietnam, broadcasting from Hanoi, capital of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. Welcome to the Voice of Vietnam. I'm yet going into this program after the news. Current affairs look at the UN High Seas Treaty, which strengthens legal framework for protecting marine biodiversity in over two thirds of the ocean. Our society segment describes how Ningpo Province's farmers benefit from new high quality grape variety. And finally, business in focus segment reports how Pena lychees are favored in the domestic market and markets with stringent standards. The first is the news. In the news headlines, the Vietnamese Revolutionary Press is held for its professionalism and humanity. Vietnam's forest coverage remains at 42.02%. And U.S. President Joe Biden says U.S.-China relations are on the right field. And after the news in detail. Press agencies and journalists have always been in the vanguard, being both creative and innovative in fostering and enriching national culture, said Deputy Prime Minister Chin Hong Han Tuesday. At a meeting between the Party Central Committee's Commission for Communication and Education, the Ministry of Information and Communications, the Vietnamese Journalist Association, and the Voice of Vietnam, Mr. Ha said the government is looking forward to receiving feedback from experts, journalists, and the public while fulfilling its tasks. The government plans to upgrade to the public services online June and the project 06. This reform will help tackle current difficulties and pave the way for new policies. We have press agencies will work with the government and authorities to encourage the participation of economic organizations, businesses and the people. Head of the Party Central Committee's Communications and Education Commission, Nguyen Chong Nghĩa, praised the Vietnamese Revolutionary Press for meeting its goal of professionalism, humanity, and modernity, and for contributing to safeguarding national sovereignty. In order to prepare for the celebration of the 100th anniversary of the Vietnamese Revolutionary Press, Mr. Nghĩa asked press agencies to create breakthrough programs and uphold the combat spirit while contributing to revisions of the press law and press-related legal documents to create a better legal corridor for the activities of journalism. Vietnam had more than 14.7 million hectares of forest last year, maintaining a percentage of forest cover of 42.02%, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development said on Tuesday. The Ministry also assigned the Administration of Forestry to establish a National Forest Resources Database. It also requested localities that recorded a reduction in natural forest area to investigate the causes and undertake measures to restore the forest, as well as to identify and punish those accountable. The National Steering Committee for COVID-19 Prevention and Control has agreed with the Health Ministry's proposal of downgrading the COVID-19 status from Group A infectious disease to Group B, according to the government office document. The Steering Committee requested ministries, sectors and localities to continue studying recommendations of the WHO to appropriately apply to the disease situation in Vietnam and prepare plans for COVID-19 prevention and control suitable to the new situation, especially in strengthening grassroots health care and preventive medicine and mobilizing and using resources. It urged for continued spirit of solidarity to overcome the consequences of the epidemic that may be prolonged and stabilize people's lives, especially the children orphaned by the COVID-19. The steering committee asked the Ministry of Health to assume the prime responsibility for and coordinate with the Ministry of Justice to consider declaring the pandemic is over. 200 firms from 20 countries worldwide will showcase their products and technologies at two industries' exhibitions in August. In 2023, Vietnam Japan Supporting Industries Exhibition and Vietnam Manufacturing Expo will be jointly organized by the Japan External Trade Organization 
and the RX Trade X Vietnam Company at the Hanoi International Exhibition Center from August the 9th to the 11th. Vu Trọng Tài is RX Trade X Vietnam Director General. Năm nay, ngoài những thiết bị và công nghệ triển lãm mới nhất, cũng như là năm, chúng ta sẽ đi sử dụng các loại thiết bị và công nghệ mới nhất. This year's exhibitions will feature new solutions to industrial joints and material management in warehouses and finished product management in factories. These solutions are expected to help Vietnamese manufacturers reduce production costs and improve productivity. The search volume for Vietnam's tourism via Google's market trend tracking tool grew 10% to 25% between mid-March and early June, ranking seventh in the world and indicating a strong demand recovery. Vietnam was the only Southeast Asian nation listed in the top 10 destinations with the highest growth worldwide, according to the Vietnam National Administration of Tourism. Vietnamese localities receiving the most searches were Ho Chi Minh City, Hanoi, Da Nang, Phu Quoc, Nha Trang, and Hội An. The biggest sources of search about Vietnam's tourism include the U.S., Japan, Australia, India, and South Korea. India and Australia posted strong growth potential as airlines have recently restored and expanded flight routes connecting Vietnam and the two countries. In the first five months of this year, Vietnam welcomed nearly 4.6 million foreign visitors, achieving 57.5 percent of its 2023 target. An ancient ritual will be reenacted from Wednesday at the Thang Long Imperial Citadel in Hanoi as part of the celebration of the Duan Ngoc Festival, which takes place on the fifth day of the fifth lunar month. And during the later Lê Dynasty from the 16th to the 18th century, kings hosted a ritual to give thanks to all of the Mandarins during the Duan Ngoc Festival in summer. And with the hot weather surrounding Duan Ngoc Festival, the ritual showed the kings special care for the Mandarins. The event will introduce to spectators two main activities, including a special band exhibition and ritual reenactment activities. The exhibition space also introduces visitors to the unique customs of the Grand Knot Festival, particularly the fan giving ceremony, which is a special ceremony reserved for the royal palace for this occasion, will be recreated during the opening ceremony. And this year's Grand Knot Festival falls on June the 22nd. You're listening to The Voice of Vietnam and now some world news. U.S. President Joe Biden said on Monday he thinks relations between the U.S. and China are on the right trail and suggested progress was made during a trip to Beijing by Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. Biden praised Blinken saying he did a good job. China and the U.S. agreed to stabilize their intense rivalry so it doesn't veer into conflict that failed to produce any major breakthrough during Blinken's trip. Blinken met with China's top diplomat, Wang Yi, Foreign Minister Qin Guang, and President Xi Jinping. She said, Beijing always hopes to see a south and steady U.S.-China relationship, adding that her believes the two countries could overcome difficulties and find the right way to get along based on mutual respect, peaceful resistance, and win-win cooperation. Blinken said he held candid, substantive, and constructive talks with Foreign Minister Qin Gang. U.S. officials and analysts expect Blinken's visit to pave the way for more bilateral meetings between Washington and Beijing in coming months. It could also set the stage for meetings between President Xi and President Biden at multilateral summits later this year. NATO leaders will not invite Ukraine to join the alliance on a summit in Lithuania in mid-July. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said on Monday, adding that leaders will discuss ways to move Ukraine closer to NATO. Stoltenberg warned against accepting a frozen conflict in Ukraine in return for an end to the conflict. U.S. President Joe Biden said last Saturday that Washington will not simplify the process of joining NATO for Ukraine. NATO has also agreed to Ukraine's request to expedite its accession to the military alliance. Ukraine is expected to deliver a clear message at the summit about what will happen once this conflict with Russia ceases. Ukraine has acknowledged that its accession to NATO will not happen while the conflict is going on. Russia has requested a meeting of the UN Security Council on June 29th 
on the topic of Western art supplies to Ukraine and the influence on attempts at diplomatic settlement of the conflict. First Deputy Permanent Representative of the Russian Federation to the UN, Dmitry Polyansky, announced on Monday. Polyansky noted that this meeting will be a response to a meeting on the humanitarian situation in Ukraine, which Western countries have requested for June 23rd. French President Emmanuel Macron announced on Monday that a French-Italian anti-missile defense system is now being deployed in Ukraine, a system designed to protect ground facilities from an air attack, takes into account the enemy's possible use of drones and electronic interference. In other main points once again, the Vietnamese revolutionary press is hailed for its professionalism and humanity. Vietnam's forest coverage remains at 42.02%, and the U.S. President Joe Biden says U.S.-China relations are on the right trail. That's the news.